Hey everybody, welcome back to our Kratom Addiction and Recovery Daily Devotional Series. So today we're wrapping up our study of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 where we talk about the different seasons of our life and of our recovery. So I'm going to go over uh, what we've read so far and then we'll finish with the last verse today which is verse 11. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on us. And today we're in verse 11, which we're going to go over the uh, first part of it. And that's going to wrap up our, our study. And that is, he has made everything beautiful in its time. I love, I love this ending to this series. We've broken down on the days before how all of these seasons of our lives and of our recovery can have deeper meanings and how these deeper meanings apply to us. And we've talked about different things that we can learn from these seasons. We've talked about how no season lasts forever because they don't. And it's been an awesome chance to just reflect on, on all of this. You know, no season of our, of our life is perfect. And when we do have seasons of joy and, and things that are, that are good, those don't last forever too. So everything is constantly changing. And so it's nice to, to look at these seasons and even the difficult ones because there will be difficult seasons of our lives. And recovery itself, quitting Kratom and recovery itself has seasons that are very difficult for us. So it's nice when we can look at these times and we can look at these seasons and think about the deeper meanings and the things that we can learn. So we wrap up today with the beginning of verse 11, which he has made everything beautiful in its time. Yesterday I shared with you and I share with you guys a lot on this channel in my videos about my personal experience with Kratom addiction and recovery. And as I approached three years Kratom free in a month, I've learned so much and I've seen so much good that has come out of this. And so this verse really has a, has a deep meaning for me. He has made everything beautiful in its time. I also shared with you yesterday how I believe that all things work for good for those who believe and are calling, called according to God's purpose. And I've really been able to see that happen in my life through my addiction and recovery process. We've talked about this week how even the hard seasons and the challenging seasons and the painful seasons and the sad seasons of our life, even those have the chance to teach us things. And so God intends for it to be this way. God intends for there to be challenges for us. He refines us in these seasons and in these challenges of our life. God used my Kratom addiction to reveal to me who he was and to prove to me who he was because I had turned my back on him so long ago before, before get, getting on Kratom, um, years and years and years, decades before I had turned my back on God. And so God really used my Kratom addiction to draw me nearer to him and for him to draw nearer to me. I knew in my Kratom addiction that I couldn't get out of it on my own. 
And so that was the chance for me to really see who God was. And now as I'm approaching this, this third year of, of sobriety, third year of freedom from Kratom, all by the grace of God, I've been able to see how God has truly made everything beautiful in its time. And so I make these videos, this whole channel exists to encourage you all, wherever you're at in your process, whether you, you're still in your addiction, whether you're wanting to quit, whether you don't want to quit, whether you don't know how to quit, or you're quitting and you're also in your recovery process. The intention, part, part of, of the intention of this channel is to encourage you and uplift you and remind you that God will make everything beautiful in its time, in His time. And to hold on, to hold tight, and to push through the, the difficult season of quitting, the difficult season, the painful season, the scary season of withdrawals and of facing life again without Kratom and the season of pause, which is post-acute withdrawal syndrome. I make these videos and I'm here because I am, I'm wanting to encourage you. I'm wanting to share God's love with you and remind you that you do have a plan and a purpose for your life. And I sit here before you as, as proof that, that, you know, God is real and that God used this, this time of my life that was the darkest time and turned it into something beautiful. So as we wrap up this study in Ecclesiastes, it's really amazing to think about how far God has brought me in this process. And I know that a lot of you are not at that point yet where you're even ready to quit, but know that it is possible and know that, that there is good to come and there is beauty to come. So I encourage you in this last day as we're wrapping up this study to think about how he could make everything beautiful for you in its time and what that would look like. You know, when I was in the depths of my addiction and I didn't even want to leave the house and I was a slave to Kratom and I couldn't go longer than three or four hours without taking it, I would often think about what my life could be like. And I would think about how I would, you know, want to be back in a job that was meaningful and that I enjoyed. And I'd want to be interacting with people in a meaningful, authentic way. Um, I would think about how I would want, you know, my health to improve and my body to be restored and my mind to be restored. I would think about how I would want my relationships to look like. And I encourage you to think about that today. You know, we can't control the future. What, whatever God has in store for us is what he has in store for us. But there's nothing wrong for us to, to think about how we would how we would like to see our lives and I always ask every day when I pray for God's will to be done in my life and for his purpose to unfold in our life and and part of me in my life so it's important to remember that that God's will is is what's more what's most important but there's nothing wrong with thinking about how we would like our our lives to look and how we would like our relationships or our health or our bodies to look you know, my eyes were so sunken in and hollow when I was in my Kratom addiction. And I'm turning 40 this year, so I'm not going to have perfect skin. I have bags under my eyes and, you know, I get dark circles because I work I work uh, into the like a, a night shift where I don't get off until about almost 11 at night. So I'm never going to have, you know, perfect, perfect skin, you know, without without bags under my eyes. That's just my genetics and stuff. But... I would often imagine when I would look at myself in the mirror and my Kratom addiction, my eyes were so sunken in and like it was like all the life was gone out of them that I would imagine, you know, wanting to to have my eyes come back to life again. And I pray I pray as well that that God fills me with his spirit. I pray almost every day for that to happen so that it shines through my eyes. And, and, and comes out, pours out in my words, in, in you know, how I treat other people. 
And though I may have bags under my eyes because I'm getting older and I work at night, you know, I do see the sparkle back in my eyes again after my Kratom addiction. And I imagined that when I was in the depths of my addiction of, you know, the, the sparkle and the life coming back to my eyes. So I encourage you to think about that. I, I encourage you to think about how God could make your life beautiful again in its time. How God can make you beautiful again in its time. And so uh, I encourage you to pray about it and think about it today. And so this is wrapping up our study of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 through 11. And I've loved this so much everybody. It has been so cool to unpack and unfold these verses together. Please keep in mind as we're talking about this that these are the things that the Lord has laid on my heart and that I have learned from my experience. But we are all different. And God works in our lives and through us all in different ways. So you may, you may take on a, a, a different meaning, a deeper meaning to these than what we've discussed. And God may reveal to you different things that he didn't reveal to me. So I encourage you on your own to think about these things. Think about these verses and these seasons of our lives. And uh, I look forward to hearing about that from you um, in our one-on-ones and in the comments below. As I say every day, um, check in with us in the comments section below and let us know how you're doing and if you need any uplifting or prayer. And um, I care about each and every one of you and I love you and I think about you every day. And um, this will conclude our daily devotional series for now. I'm going to be doing some verses here and there. Um, I know that this is really important to some of you, so I'm going to do as many as I can, as frequently as I can. Um, but this was the original um, plan and intent that I had had to do this until the last day of this month, which is today. Um, so I won't be back tomorrow, but I may be back the next day um, for another devotional and uh, I'll see you then. Okay, bye.